Here at Sacred Heart Children's Hospital's Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, the focused approach is that of family-centered care. With that care comes some of the most critical and technologically advanced services available to this hospital's smallest patients. Well, first off, welcome to the NICU. Um, it, it's interesting what we deal with in the NICU because we deal with a gamut of babies. By definition, we deal with any baby who has any sort of illness within the first month of life. And that can constitute a baby born at term that has a surgical problem. That can constitute a baby born three months early and has respiratory problems and cardiac problems and issues that we'll have to deal with over a long period of time. So we kind of run the gamut. We run anything from babies born at less than a pound at birth to babies at nine pounds at birth. Dr. Barsodi understands better than anyone the critical care taken with these infants and with that, the approach that is needed for their parents. Uh, we went to a three to one uh, ratio. Right. Uh, families that have their babies in the NICU go through what we call a roller coaster. There are, especially if you're born preterm, there's a lot of issues that happen and these babies are very physiologically unstable. So we don't um, sugarcoat what's going on with these babies. We really have to have the parents be there with us and understand the severity of what's happening. So, and things can change from minute to minute. So, baby could be stable today and then by four o'clock in the afternoon, things have sort of turned on us and the baby's more unstable. And the parents will then be told of the changes and have to be here with us as we sort of work through that. And so emotionally for the parents, it's at one point things are feeling good and things are going well. and very acutely things can change and not go so well and emotionally that's very difficult on parents. So I don't think your exam's that worrisome. So she's only having residuals of a third. Uh, we're not doing anything. Okay. So I'll check her growth and make sure her growth's okay. Is she on For mom Audrey Showquist, the realization that her babies were to be born premature and then come to rely on the expertise of the NICU, it came without much notice and no real time to analyze the situation. Well, I was already a high-risk pregnancy, and I started contracting at five months, so we were trying to watch that. And they had, they're called EFFs on their heart, which are echogenic folici, and they're just a thickening of the heart. So I actually had come in for an ultrasound for that, and that's when they told me I needed to admit myself because my cervix had been funneling from the inside. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe six hours after that, I gave birth. So we didn't really have a lot of time to give them steroids or do anything to get their lungs developed. It all happened really fast, to be honest, so I didn't, didn't really know it was going to happen like that. And like most emergency early term births, complications are inevitable. They were very, very, very sick in the beginning. Um, he had an emergency surgery for a valve perforation. Um, he had a PDA, which is a valve that st it stays open in the womb, but when you come out, it should be shut. Well, neither one of theirs was shut. And so hers, she had to have a ligation by surgery, so a heart surgery through her back, and his close with medicine. So, but he did have the, the, in, the bowel perforation. And they're 32 weeks old now. We've been here for 57 days, and I'm here every day. And they just keep getting bigger and You've been through a lot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Again, even in NICU, it's the team approach that is taken that really serves the babies and parents best. The NICU has an interesting system for taking care of the babies. It's a very, very much a team approach that the nurses and the physicians do not, one's not over the other, it's more we offer different parts of the care to the baby. Um, so you have the physicians, which are neonatologists, who have trained through pediatrics into a fellowship uh, for perinatology and have done six years of postdoctorate training to be qualified to take care of these babies. The nurses then have been educated specifically for NICU. Many of our nurses have been here for 10 to 15 years, so not only do they have the formal education, they have the long-term experience of how these babies react. Additionally, we have specially trained dietitians that help us with the nutritional needs of these babies. We have specially trained occupational therapists and physical therapists, so we have a, a, a huge team of people that actually interact with the babies. I just feel completely comfortable. I just, everybody seems to be on top of things are really well about preparing you for what could happen and and just the outcome of everything but everything's been great all the doctors are great um, the nurses are very comforting you need comfort or a smile or whatever besides the incredible care that is received in the NICU it is the unique design of the actual unit that promotes family and privacy something units of the past did not have 
When the NIC was built um, five years ago, we made a conscious effort to move towards something called family-centered care. Um, our whole point was is that when we take care of, of micropamies or any sick newborn, we are also taking care of their family. And so we need the parents to be involved in the care of the baby. So we needed to create an environment where they felt welcomed and part of the care. The way we chose to do that from a structural point of view was to create what were called semi-private rooms. So the traditional NICUs of past were big wards where you would have eight to ten babies in one room. Um, and there was some benefit to that, but the parents always felt as if they were in the way. What we did is create rooms where only two families were in each room and they each had their own space. They had a couch to sit on, they had storage for some of their stuff. And there was an ability that as the baby received care, the parents were no longer in the way. There was a place for them and a role for them in their care. And so the whole unit is established that way with the parents in mind. I actually work as a um, children's therapist and in my undergrad I did a study on the NICU and this was probably 10, 10 years ago, 10 or 11 years ago. And at that time I actually had a, a cousin who was in the NICU. She was born at 26 weeks and um, was able to kind of get some pictures and kind of study up on what they were doing then. And just kind of knowing what they were able to do then for her, she's 12 now and perfectly healthy. And then um, also going up to the NICU now and seeing all the new advances that they've made since then um, really put my mind at ease. And so my vision was going into this room where there's all these little beds lined up and um, you know beeping going off and noisy and busy and hustle and bustle and being able to go up to the new um, NICU and seeing that it's they're all in their own little room just with another baby and that the beeping's all on the outside where the nurses are. Um, it was really peaceful in the rooms for the babies and um, I was even more um, relaxed knowing that it was the things that I was worried about um, were being taken care of. What I see over the years in practicing the old style and the new style of, of the NICU is that the parents are more involved with the care of their baby. They have a better understanding of the issues that we have to deal with and as we sort of work with the babies and help stabilize the babies they see what's going on. And what advances technology-wise in NICU care does Dr. Barsodi see for the future? Technology in the NICU is a very interesting um, discussion point. It continues to evolve and as the technology gets better we do a better job in taking care of the babies. At this point as far as I, my understanding of where we are with the current literature, Sacred Heart has actually afforded us the best technology to take care of these babies. Everything that we need and everything that is coming down the pike to make things better, Sacred Heart is more than willing to invest in to help us take care of these babies. Um, the interesting thing of neonatology is what we do today will look foreign and um, archaic two years from now. So it's a continually evolving science at this point and probably evolving faster than the other parts of medicine because we're still in our, dare I say, infancy of, of this field. They may still be in their infancy technology-wise, but for the team here at Children's Hospital, it's the people that take care of these precious babies and their drive to see positive outcomes that really matters most today. And the reason you enter neonatology, I think, is because you get to deal with very sick babies. Um, but what you do from the beginning is to offer hope. I think that's what drives us in the neonatology, is that it's sort of a feel that you're driving hope. You're taking these very ill babies, and you can see the three months down the road when the baby's going to go home. So as you get nearing discharge, the feeling in the unit is excitement, actually. Everybody, the goal of having a baby in the NICU is to get them home as healthy as possible. So as you get close to discharge, you really begin to get excited about it. For recent NICU graduates, Ruth and William Gilmartin and their son Finley, coming home was a transition they were prepared for. Well, he's born three pounds, 12 ounces, which was the shock when they first pulled him out and announced his weight. They told us it would be three to six weeks, most likely, that he would be in there. So at three and a half weeks, we were pretty excited. <laughs> Actually kind of shocked that, oh, he's ready to come home? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> I could go on and on, honestly, about the care that they offer there. I mean, there are a lot of different nurses that take care of him, and every single one, there's, they're all a little different, of course, with how they go about things, but 
under all that, they all ex have extreme care, like actual love for these babies. And, you know, I could go home at night and trust, you know, that he's okay and that they pay great attention to them. They were with him for three weeks, you know, day in and day out, monitoring him and how he was progressing. And for them to, you know, discharge him and say he's ready to go home, it's like we brought him home. I mean, at least I brought him home already feeling like, you know, he's, he's going to be okay. He's been watched all this time in the NICU, and they say he's ready. So in one sense, I've been less uh, worried about bringing him home. I think every physician has their own success story. My, what drives me and keeps me going as far as seeing babies that are very, very ill and moving forward, I remember a family, this must have been eight or nine years ago, where the baby was very, very sick, born at 23 weeks gestation, which is what's considered below the cusp of viability um, in the United States today. And this baby was very, very unstable, to the point where there were many nights that I was called back to the unit to actually do CPR on the baby and, and help this baby out. And we were very um, concerned that even if the baby survived, the the consequence of the brain would have been large and this baby would have had a lot of long-term complications. And I saw this baby two years after gra graduating from the NICU and the baby was walking and running around and acting fairly normal for a two-year-old um, infant or toddler. And that just reminded me that I'm not God. I do what I can and by the grace of God things get better and we have to trust that, that um, we do the best we can and we go from there. For Audrey and her babies, Liam and Lily, that trust means everything. They're a miracle babies. Yes, yes they are. So, and I can't wait to tell them all these stories when they get bigger. As you've seen in this half hour, the programs and services here at Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center and Children's Hospital are in place to give every woman the absolute best chance of having a healthy pregnancy and most importantly, a healthy baby. I'm Christy Gorenson. Thanks for watching.